All right, we talked a little bit in the last video about logarithms. Let's look at logs and exponentials a little bit more. Uh, we want to express in terms of sums and differences of logarithms. We want to take this, we want to take this little guy here and express it. We want to expand it out to log plus something, log plus something, log minus something, that kind of idea. Expand it out. So the property says that if I see division, I can split it up with log with a splitting those two pieces up and say subtract between the two. So it would be log this top minus log of this bottom. Okay. Now I see a multiplication in here. Remember our, we said at the very tail end of the last video you can split that up with addition. Okay, so I'll split those two pieces up with addition, and we still got this guy here. There's another property that says if you have a power, you can just pull it out to the front. There you go. We've expanded it all the way out. And as far as we can go, none of that stuff would simplify log of 2 is not a nice whole number. So there you go. That's as far as you can go. The next question, you you want to do it in reverse. They give you this expanded version. You want, they want you to condense it back down to one, one logarithm. So remember what happens with these numbers in front? A second ago, I pulled them off I pulled them off of a, as a power and put them up front. So now I'm going to reverse that and write them as powers. So I'm going to bring that guy back up as a power. That's the order I'm going to do these things, and you, you, you've got to take care of those power, that power stuff first in this case. So this, it's the last question in reverse. So that would be x to the 1 half plus log m cubed. All right, now a half power is the same thing as a square root. Same thing. And now, remember what you do when it's a plus? That means you can rewrite it as an addition. Right? You rewrite it as one log, uh, uh, addition. You rewrite it as multiplication. That's what I did a second ago. I split it up with, that means I split up a multiplication somewhere. So I'm going to say m cubed times the square root of x. And I can write that just like this. I don't have to say times if it's right in front of the radical like that. That's just the nomenclature. So uh, there you go. We got one single logarithm and I can't simplify that at all. Okay, so there's logarithms in a, in a nutshell. Uh, let's try to solve this this exponential here. Uh, what I would like to do is have this to say can, can I rewrite this as 4 to some power? Do you know your four powers of 4 up to 4,000? I don't, I don't know. So, I, I don't know, 4 to the 5th I guess maybe, 4 to the 5th power. Four to the sixth, that might be it. Yeah, four to the sixth is four thousand ninety-six. So we can rewrite that as four to the sixth power. Well, you got the same basis, so just set their powers equal. Take away twelve. Divide by negative three. X is 2. So there you go for that. So the trick to that was make sure you can get the same base on both sides. But now some of them you can't get that. I mean you just can't get it. You can't get that uh, to the same base. I mean 5 to some power equals 21. There's no way. So uh, so what you can do, I'm going to take, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewrite this as a logarithm. As a logarithm. Five to some power gives me twenty-one. Five to some power gives me twenty-one. That's what this is. This is the exponential form. It's the logarithmic form. Uh, or you know, I like to. Some people will look at it like this. They'll say, take the log base five of both sides. They'll say, take the log base five. If you take log base five, 
Well, log base 5 of 5 cancels to 1, or it gets rid of the, the power there. Or it, all it is is that power, so it's just x cancels to x. You're still left with log base 5 of 21. That's the same thing I've got over here. Right? I'm just rewriting it in logarithmic terms. Log base 5 of 21, you've got to change your base formula. Any calculator will do this. It has a log button on it. You don't have to have a fancy calculator. So log 21 divided by log 5. 1.8917 1.8917 and we can check our work right does that give me 21 it'll be approximately 5 to the power 1.8917 pretty darn close pretty darn close uh, E remember what we did to, to Kill off an E last time of that little property. Let's take the natural log of both sides. That's messy, I know, but natural log and E cancels, and you're left with negative point one nine T equals the natural log point oh eight. I basically rewritten it as a logarithm, like I did a second ago, but I like to think of it as just take the natural log, get rid of E. Now we'll just solve for T by dividing negative point one nine. Because that's a number, right? Negative point one nine. So t is equal to that, so let's figure out what that is. Natural log of 0.08, and then divide that by negative 0.19. Shoot, 0.19. 13.2933. T is equal to 13.293. Take the natural log. Alright, so we've got an equation with logarithms in it that we want to solve it. This jumps out at me and means that I, that jumps out at me saying that I could put this back together. So whenever you're trying to solve a logarithm question, the very first thing you want to try to do is get it all back together to one log. So if I can put this back together with multiplication, it's a good idea. Log base 4 of x minus 4 times x minus 4. Right, I put those two pieces back together with multiplication. That tells me to do that. Equals 1. Now once I have one logarithm, I can rewrite it as an exponential. I can get rid of the logarithm just by rewriting it. Right, 4 to this power equals what's inside here. Cool. Well, 4 to the first power is just 4. And then if I multiply that out, I get x squared minus 4x, negative 4x plus 16. Now, this is a quadratic. To solve this, I need to get rid of the 4, make a 0 over there. Factors of 12 that would give me 8. I think that factors. Uh, 6 and 2. And if you set both those factors equal to 0, x equals 6, x equals 2. Now, that would be okay if this is all you were trying to solve. This is not the original question, though. The original question was a log base 4 plus a log base 4 equals 1. So you, what you have to do then is if you get an answer, you might get answers down here, but they don't, might not work back up at the top. So take your 6, take the 6 and plug it in. What would you get? You get 6 minus 4. You, always, you gotta check your work here. You gotta check because it's part of the problem. And what I'm checking to make sure of, you don't have to go very far when you check this. Is this value negative? You can't take a log of a negative number. So that's fine. X equals 6 is an answer. What about the, what was the other number? The 2. Two down at the bottom. If I plug a two in, whoa, I'm 
I'm going to stop right there so I can see it. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Uh, can't do that. So there's only one answer. Even though we got two numbers, there's only one answer, x equals 6. And just to tell you that I, I, I don't make mistakes, I actually did this whole question a second ago, and stupid me, I forgot to put the log base 4 down, and I thought it was just a plain old log, and it screwed everything up. So I just wanted to let you know that everyone makes mistakes. All right, so if you have any questions, just email me. It, it, it might just be a dumb mistake. I make dumb mistakes quite a bit, quite a bit. So, but I edited that out of the video. All right, so here we've got another question. We want it's a it's an, uh, an equation that we want to solve for. We want to get condense this side over here to one log. I'm gonna condense it down. I see an, a subtraction, which means I can replace it, uh, condense it using division and you, that's on top this is on the bottom now they're both the same logarithms when you have the same logs you can just set what's inside here equal to each other okay we want to multiply both sides by x plus 4 to get rid of the denominator. Looks like we got another quadratic going on. So I'm going to get me a 0 on this left side. It would be the easiest to do, I think. Right, I believe this will factor <clears throat> negative means they're opposite signs factors uh, two numbers that would multiply to give you 10 but would combine to give you 3 if you subtracted them away from each other right that would subtract to give you 3 2 and 5 and 5 gets the plus because you want this guy to be plus the big number gets the plus gets that sign so x equals negative 5 and x equals 2. Now you've solved this equation, this quadratic. You need to make sure that it works in the original of what you're dealing with. Remember, you can't take a logarithm of a negative number. So if I plug a negative 5 in here, if I plug a negative 5 in, I'll get 5, which is fine. Plug a negative 5 in right here, it won't work. Now I get a negative 1. And if I plug a negative 5 in here, it definitely won't work. So negative 5 is not an answer. 2. Check out a 2. You get 12, which is fine. 6, which is fine. Log of 2, which is fine. That one works. You know what? Sometimes both of those numbers don't work. It, it's fine. There can be no solution. All right? But in this case, we found two answers. Okay, we got some word problems now. <clears throat> So, in, I'll do this one right here, number 8. In 1998, the population of country C was 21 million, and the exponential growth rate was 1% per year. Find the exponential growth function. So, your exponential growth function is uh, P of T equals P E to the R T. That's the idea behind it. And P naught is sometimes put there. Sometimes instead of R, there's a K. Sometimes they put a K there, whatever that is, it's a rate that goes right there. So exponential because of population growth. It says exponential growth rate. So our function would be the original, which is 21 million, E, and the rate was 1%, so I'm going to say 0 0.01. Now you convert that to a decimal, and then T is going to be, you know, that's what your, your function is all about is time. And that's your function, that's your exponential growth function. We found our exponential growth function. All right. Number nine. Suppose that $7,000 is invested at an interest rate of 5.3% per year. It's compounded continuously. And it's $7,000 for three years. But it says it's compounded continuously. So if it's compounded continuously, you use this formula. P naught would be the seven thousand dollars 
E if the rate is 0 0.053 and your time is three years. And you just type that in your calculator. Most calculators have an E button. They're supposed to. So 7,000 uh, E. My E is not a second LN to the power of 0 0.053 times 3. 8,206.37. Okay. So, there's one more question here. Word question. Suppose $8,000 is invested in an interest rate 5.6 per year, compounded continuously again. What would the doubling time be? How long would it take to get a double that amount? Well, let's use that same formula. So you've got $8,000. E, the rate is 0 0.056. You don't know the time. You want to find the time it takes to double this. But you know what, you know what you're looking for, though. You're looking for double, which was $16,000. That's double 8000 so how, you want to solve for t here. So first off, we're going to get rid of the 8,000. That's going to give you 2 equals e to the point 0.056t. All right, well, how do you get rid of an e? You take the natural log of both sides. That kills off the e. So the natural log of 2 equals 0.056t. And then divide by 0 0.056. So that leaves you a t. So we're going to take the natural log of 2 and then divide that by 0 0.056. 12.377. It takes 12.38 years. If you have any questions, please ask.